Hello, I'm Andrew Simpkins, and uh, here's another of our thoughts for the day. Um, I last did a thought about three weeks ago when I had just started reading Mark's Gospel, and I shared from a verse in chapter one. Well, since then, I've, I've got to the end of Mark, um, steadily reading through at just under a chapter a day. And I dipped into a couple of commentaries while I was reading just to get some of the background. And one of the thoughts that struck me um, in reading some of the background to Mark's Gospel was the fact that when it was first produced um, and presented to churches, the great bulk of people wouldn't have read it. They would have listened to it. Because in those days, of course, there wasn't any printing and Christians didn't have personal copies of the Bible. They were just scrolls and parchments. And of course, a vast majority of people were illiterate in the ancient world, so they couldn't read anyway. So you have to imagine that in the early churches, people would come together and the gospel would have been read to them. Quite possibly all in one go. Mark's gospel, for example, that can be read through in about 90 minutes. So an early church could have come together and listened to the whole of Mark's gospel in one sitting. Or perhaps they had a tea break or two along the way. But yeah, you could read or listen to the whole of Mark's gospel quite comfortably in an evening or a morning or an afternoon. And it struck me that we don't do that very often, do we? We read passages, we study passages in life groups, we preach from texts. But Mark is a story. It's a story. It has a beginning, it has a middle, it has an end. Uh, if someone said, um, well, yes, I've got pride and prejudice and I've, I've read chapters 2, 16 and 30. Or, yes, I've got a copy of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and um, I quite enjoy reading just chapters 6, 18 and 42. We think, that's nuts. Why don't you just read the story? So, why don't we read just the whole story of Mark in one go? Uh, or at least over the course of a day. I mean, if you just read it through quietly to yourself, you'd probably do it in 75 minutes. 75 to 90 minutes, perhaps. So just means giving up one or two TV programmes, doesn't it? To read the whole gospel. But why do that? Why do that? That's a good question. What would be the benefit of reading it in a day or in a sitting? So I tried it this week. Uh, on Monday afternoon, I sat down and uh, I read through Mark's gospel. I did have a tea break halfway through. And... I suppose it would have a different impact on each one of us, wouldn't it? I, I don't think there's a, a single answer to what would be the effect of reading through Mark all in one go. Uh, the response would depend on the people that we are, the faith we have, the circumstances we're in. But for me, there were three things which I just share briefly with you. If you read it all through in one go, you get a clearer view about Jesus. It strikes you the amazing things he did. The authority with which he dealt with so many different situations. He's direct with some people. He's compassionate with people. He, he is just completely different to any other character you've ever encountered. The gospel starts by saying it's the good news. But when you read it through, you think this is a bit of a disturbing story as well. I mean, the, if I may say so, yeah, the naive view is that in the gospels, it's a kind of story of sweetness and light as Jesus goes around doing amazing miracles and telling wonderful stories. Well, he does go around doing amazing miracles and telling wonderful stories. But the text is full of 
conflict, opposition, persecution by the Pharisees and the scribes. His hometown rejects him. His family don't understand him. The disciples fail to trust him. The disciples fail to understand what he's saying to them. And Judas betrays him and Peter denies him and they all run away when he's arrested. And so it makes you think, what does it take to be a disciple of Jesus? It's not a soft option. Am I up for this? And then the very end of the story, chapter 16, the resurrection. Now, it appears that Mark himself only wrote the first eight verses of Mark 16, and the rest was then added by another writer. So in the, in the first eight verses, you get the women going to the tomb. They see the angel. The angel tells them that Jesus is risen. But they flee from the tomb in amazement and terror without saying anything. And the story ends on this note of, so what is your reaction to the resurrection of Jesus? It presents you with a question that only you can answer. But it's very clear that that is the question, having read the story. So here's my suggestion for the day. Why don't you make time one day to read through the whole of Mark's Gospel? and see what it speaks to you and what fresh perspectives it gives you on your faith in Christ and your walk with him. Amen.